Welcome to the NZ Nomad Runner podcast. I'm Chris Lucas. And I'm Charlotte Milne. We are run coaches at CMF Running, where we help runners and athletes of all abilities to any surface, any distance, races. We've just been for a run. We have. We have, um, we have uh, stopped off in Rotorua um, to see if we're going to get a dog. Yes, we might be getting a dog. A running, a running dog. Yes. Um, how exciting. How exciting. We're on our way down to Kim's in Kapiti. Um So, yeah, we've just come from Auckland, and now it's now, and then we're going down to Kapiti. Yes. Hmm. Looking forward to that. Yes. Today we're talking, we thought we'd do a, a post-Auckland Marathon uh, data dive, uh, data analysis, uh, pulling up a few examples for you guys of uh, some races of um, our runners at Auckland. Uh, we've got a sub four or a four-ish, a uh, sub 330 female, two, and a sub 330 male, and then we have a fasty, a sub two hours 40 uh, marathoner to show you at the end. Uh, and basically the purpose of what we're doing is we want to just show you the differences between like, yeah, how a heart rate number, e.g. like a number like 160, uh, can be in a different zone um, by individual. Because everyone's a bit different. Everyone has different zones. Uh, all these calculators, the math minus your age and all this sort of stuff is uh, rubbish. Um, it's a general population sort of thing, uh, but not for runners who are training for endurance. And also we want to show you how different runners uh, fatigue um, in a marathon. Not It's not just as simple as zone three the whole time. <laughs> yeah, um, so a lot of this sort of um, is discovered in training and, um, you know, each mm. each runner sort of has a degree of, like, compliancy to a, to a training plan um, due to, you know, just life and, and, and who they are as a person. And that's totally cool. But, you know, like um, what I've sort of learned over the years of training is that um, if a person also has an accurate heart rate monitor um, and that you can kind of decipher, like, what happens at certain heart rates and how long they can hold it for. Mm. So when um, this, this runner goes out and, and does a race like a marathon, like Auckland Marathon, that um, – there's sort of like a pace range and also heart rate range that they specifically, especially the heart rate range, I guess, can specifically sort of hold for a sort of, so it paints that picture. Um, and as long as it kind of aligns and then there's like the pace, obviously that um, couples with that so that they're able to hold that pace for that amount of time, obviously getting to them to the finish line hmm. without blowing up. Um, yes. There's pace zones and heart rate zones. Mm -hmm. That's what quite often what we do, isn't it? The process when we're um, getting to know a runner that we've onboarded is um, we'll have them do a threshold session or if they have a Garmin when we onboard them, uh, there'll be prior run data that we can um, look at. And so we'll go back and look at things like half marathons that they've executed well and finished mm. uh, finished well, uh, not one where they've blown up. <laughs> uh, so we'll look for like, yeah, half marathons uh, or 10Ks and depending on the runner or, you know, we'll just look at a combination of both. Um, that's how I kind of do it anyway. I'll, I'll, I'll look at a, a bunch of um, stuff and things like that if it's available with that runner. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, you decipher their zones from there. I can set a threshold. Um, and, yeah, typically what I do as well, just to share this with folks as well, is um, when I onboard someone new um, and I have their prior data and I will set their sort of heart rate and pace thresholds, then... On the very first week, always, that I have them, I'll be like, go and run on flat at XYZ pace, uh, which is effectively their easy pace. And I'm looking for some kind of correlation between their easy pace and something that's going to be aerobic and from a heart rate perspective as well. And that's sort of a nice little confirmation marker for me, uh, at least that I'm on the, on the right ball pack or ballpark with someone's zones. Yes, that's yeah. That's in really, terms of their heart rate zones, mm, yeah. yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, it's just like um, double checking and rechecking. Yeah. Um, what sort of matches up with you know the output that is desired for that particular run, um, 
and you know we all have there's all nuances within different people and like it's just you know just sort of figuring those out as the coach and then you know advising the client or the runner and then them doing it you know and um trusting the process of of doing it and opposed to like you know necessarily running for a pace because they want an outcome you know but you know mm. a very typical one uh for a marathon is the sub four um but you know the harsh truth is is that can you like actually do that you know and um there's a there's ways of getting there like there's ways of like training to get there which is enhances your chances um and then you know maybe it might be not this year but maybe it will be the next year um you know and sometimes to build the aerobic base well actually not sometimes always to build the aerobic base mm, the accumulation of running and, yeah. yeah at the right intensity is that easy intensity that you yeah. said aerobic base and that interesting thing i was thinking of when you're saying that is um the common error especially for like the those sub 330 and sub four hour runners and this and the 430s but yeah taking that if you're a if you're a capable of a four hour marathon then your easy pace uh, is around 630 pace isn't it it's about 615 630 that's about your easy pace on flat um, but uh, more often than not uh, that individual will be running more like 545s or something like that in their 530s even like in their runs and so it's something it's it's uh they're effectively just running all their runs at you know marathon pace you know 540 mm. ish pace um or slightly slower than uh and so yeah that's not going to develop your aerobic um, engine that's going to yeah, you're effectively just training at your marathon pace all the time. That's tempo because the thing about tempo pace is it's actually quite easy until it's not. Until you're like 32Ks into a marathon and you're like, oh no, um, or 28, you know, sometimes. So it's like if you think about, you know, each hour run as part of a whole of the training block opposed yes. to like, I'm feeling really good today. Yes. And um, I'm going to run 530s. Um, yes. So it's just <laughs> a low marathon pace if you're a four hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> faster than. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like, um, so like if you're, you know, you're, you're a runner, maybe you want to do this for like many years. Um, if you're just going to go hard for like the first two to three years, like you could end up with injuries and niggles and mm. like, it's, it's somewhat part of it, but it doesn't have to be normal. No. Um, no, and it's, sure. it's kind of like a common myth or misconception that you know sometimes niggles and injuries are part of training and it's just sometimes you know uh when you're new you just sort of your your training goes from not being a runner to like running five times a week 60ks 530s like it's just it's if you think about yeah, it yeah. to expect nothing to happen would be quite <laughs> ignorant <laughs> yeah 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 uh, it's quite um, funny but we all do it i mean because it's the runner mentality isn't it i've done it i've done it i have done it i have had all the niggles the shin splints the knee pains like yeah. you know years back and i did all that running fast to too fast too you know we've yeah. all done it and that's just the run runner mentality it's like you know i don't know it's just you know more we just think that more is better it's addictive as faster well. is better i feel good that made me feel good um i've and then the, and then now we have like just all this online information as well um just just like what we're doing yeah you're <laughs> putting more online information yeah, we're, giving, we're giving you more information yes just to um, YouTube. yeah yeah um but yeah it's just uh that's why having this these conversations are quite valuable because it's, it's not all straight cut delivered in an instagram reel it's um stuff that needs a bit of unpacking um for sure yeah and um you know like there is a bit of a boom going on and running at the moment and um you know people have been running for like a year 18 months and going out and doing these you know marathons and expecting like this arbitrary number figure which is possible for some people um it, and isn't so possible for for others and it doesn't mean that you're a failure or you're a bad runner it just means you're a new runner yeah um, and everyone's different eh? yeah and some yeah. people have natural ability some yeah, people natural it's, physiology yeah and god yeah some people are just you know they they're not there yet you know and it's like when um you know getting a coach could could really help you you know um to getting 
to that to that goal or just yeah. um unpacking just, all that stuff and seeing where you sit and what what's your your ability potential you know for growth in your own running journey yeah yeah because you do you see these things on on like posts online eh? and it's like um i ran a sub three or a sub 330 or whatever it is and i i it's all because i did um, zone two running <laughs> like started six months ago and it's like you know it's just such an obscure and so someone just reading that and consuming that would be like oh i've just got to do that you know and it's just it's just not like it's just not that simple you know <laughs> yeah yeah it's just not that simple and um yeah there's always like more to the story uh like maybe that individual has um you know was an athlete as a younger person as a teenager perhaps they've run they've taken a 10-year break and then they've come back to it as an adult and so all that muscle memory and adaptations were still there in the body and i've seen that quite a bit and uh, yeah, there's all sorts of all sorts of stuff. I had um, a guy last year um, who I actually trained for uh, Tarawera 100k, and he had basically only started. He only came back to running uh, a few months before Auckland Marathon last year. Um, and so normally, if I had someone come to me, and he came to me like in November as well, mm -hmm. he came to me after Auckland Marathon, and he was like do you think I can uh, run a Tarawera 100k? And so normally the answer for someone that has started running just earlier that year, the, the answer would be no. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea for you. Um, but this individual, um, you know, I had a, had a chat to him, talked to him. Um, and on like three months training, I was Auckland, this is like a sideline story. He did, and self-training as well. Um, from off the couch, um, did like a 320 or a 317 marathon at Auckland last year. And um, so that's like some, you know, I just know straight away the red flag goes up. I'm like, okay, there's some more to this story. I need to hear what this story is. Yeah. And the, uh, there's some natural ability here. And then so after talking to him and, and sort of asking him, okay, so what have you done in your life, like with other things? And it turns out he was an ex professional uh, Australian rules um, player when he was younger for many years. You know, so there's just like this thing of like this years of athleticism like in this individual as a mm -hmm. younger person you know and that counts for stuff you know that counts for a lot yeah it's um running running is really simple but also quite complicated um <laughs> there is a lot of stuff that's tied up into running like initially um you go out for a run and you feel great and initially you get a lot better because you've like gone from not running to running yeah, of course yeah. there's going to be improvements um and also so so, but then it sort of stops. <laughs> um, and then, you know, if we're younger, like maybe in our teens and our twenties, maybe the sort of improvement curve will keep going, um, you know, a bit more because we're, we're, you know, young, um, and have no life baggage and kids or stressful job mm, and less susceptible to injury yeah. and the recovery is a bit better and stuff. Eh? For sure. And, you know, and if we're starting in our thirties or, you know, or later, you know, we've got a bit of life. We've got a bit of life in our body, and it can come out in our running. Um, and so, again, that's when like a coach is really good at sort of navigating the life when the with the running. And um, and again, what how that's related to like a marathon or a marathon time is that like how much um, this person can handle on top of their like life or how their life stuff affects their running. Um, some people are super, super simple and they just like have heaps of energy and can just go from one race to another. Um, boing, 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 boing. Yeah, they sleep like babies every night. Yeah, they're <laughs> they just get like stressed out. And um, so their bodies are recovering, they have a lot of energy. So, and if, if they don't have stress in their life, then their digestion's working well. So, they're absorbing all their nutrients and everything they're eating. And so, therefore, their energy is good. And it's just like this beautiful thing that works well. Yeah. So their energy, they're able to train and um, handle good loads. And yeah. It's just funny, isn't it? And they're not anxious, you know, and their heart rate doesn't go sky high, you know, and it's just so it's like quite complicated, but also like it doesn't have to be like that complicated as well. Like if you'll just kind of go out and accept where you are in your training and where you are with your running at the moment, 
then you're going to go run a marathon, you're going to do your best and that's going to be great, you know, and then and then it's kind of like fine tuning until you get to that that goal or even better, who knows. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of like how we mm -hmm. get to as we get to like a that's like the a, outcome yeah, um, yeah, yeah. of the marathon is taking in that picture opposed to mm. um just thinking you know for a 31 year old male you weigh 90 kilos you're gonna be x you know it's not it's <laughs> you know it's not that that sort of like mathematical that's where they're like the apps is, is really funny yeah like the you know, run an app or whatever, where it's the user themselves, mm. <laughs> i.e. the runner, <laughs> who's deciding. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I want to run this pace, um, you know, at the marathon. The user themselves is deciding their ability before they've actually even done any running, like on mm. that plan. And um, so it's just like, yeah, I'm going to, I want to do a four hour marathon. And um, I'm choosing how many runs I run a week too, by the way. <laughs> I want to do six runs a week, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, all this yeah. kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm an advanced athlete. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's quite funny. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, the, we get into a little bit of issues then because then the, this this app, this AI is going to spit out this training for you that's, um, yeah, invariably if you might be in, if you're a four, you might be a 410, a sub 410 marathoner, which is quite a different story to a sub four hour marathoner. Um, yeah, so there's a yeah, it's going to spit out a plan for you that is not going to be the paces that it has you running for your easy pace and your marathon pace and uh, tempo pace and all of that stuff is not going to be optimum for you. It's not going to be giving you the best outcome, and then and so there's higher chance of you actually falling short of your goal. And then if you're like um, doing layering on all those runs on top of that and you're not factoring in you know other variables in your life such as you know family life commitments and you know all that all that sort of stuff maybe you are prone to runner's knee or shin splints and yeah quite quickly uh, things just start mounting and in the earlier stages of the the block like mm. maybe you're fine like um you know maybe you're, you, you're doing like four to six months um prior in the early stages you're all good like with that slightly higher load so you don't really notice it you're kind of getting away with it mm -hmm. but uh, then what happens is you like get to the meaty part where it's like time to dig a hole <laughs> and that's where the time it's time to like train for your marathon those like key like mm. sort of eight weeks before and because you've just overshot the mark by like 10 15 20 percent like in those earlier stages you're just not, you're just like cooked for the key stuff. And that's where people get injured, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Because like, of what they've done prior on top of. Yeah, it's like accumulation of training, right? It's, it's mm. accumulation you know, of training and fatigue and just wear and like, like on your body. And um, that's yeah, what I mean energy. by like the mm. bigger picture, you know, and like, um, I've got to save, it's like that saying that we've said before, it's like you've got to keep the easy stuff easy and the hard stuff hard and that might be a block of actually easy um, because eventually you're going to get to like, you know, a 32K training run with, yeah. you know, like 10Ks of marathon pace. At least, yeah. you know, and um, it's going to be quite hard because you've done all this training leading into that. There's obviously re recovery weeks and we're not going to be like, you've got to be real tired, but you know, if you've gone that 10 seconds too quick, like you're just sort of going into the no man's land of, you know, gray zone. And so when it goes to holding, you know, marathon pace, you're not able to do it because your body's got this unnecessary fatigue on it. Um, you know, easy mm, runs. Yeah, yeah, you're not getting the best out of it training either, yeah. Mm. Yeah, easy runs are really easy. In conversational pace, RPE, two to three, maybe two to four mm. out of 10. Mm. That's yeah. that's the one. Yeah. Talking, cruising, cruising. Right, that was a big intro. That bit. was a big start. We 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 <laughs> got into that. Chris so, wanted to do this by uh, well, I wanted Chris to do this by himself, but then he's like, we need to talk to each other. Yeah, so yeah, it's just not the same. You guys would have switched off by now if it was just me. You wouldn't have had this, you know, banter. Yeah, yeah. Charlotte is what makes the po this podcast. <laughs> so we're going to start with um, a 
here we go, a sub 330 female, and this happens to be <laughs> our very own Charlotte Moon from, uh, this is so this is Auckland Marathon, and this is in um, 2022 actually. So I don't know what happened down here with this, this power spikes coming up here, so just ignore those. There's a few, and this is a this is where also where there's yeah nuance with data. Looking at data, there's like you get little errors um, popping up. Like we can see, we've got little errors here, like these power things. So just ignore <laughs> ignore. That. So I've got no power, and then suddenly I've got heaps. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what happened. I could take that away. Anyway. Yeah, yeah um, no, I'll take that away too. Yeah. Cool. So now we've got the green. That's the pace, and um, the red. That's the the red line. Is the heart rate. And these are the zones. So we're in training peaks. This is zone one, zone two here, going across here, zone three, which is zone three heart rate, and zone four at the top. The dotted black line running across the top is Shah's threshold, uh, which is 174 ish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds that's, that's right. That right. Um, yeah, so, yeah, 2022, this was a wet year at the marathon, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it windy? A little bit at the start line, wasn't it? And then on the way out to St. Helier's, wasn't it? That's, that's, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. How was your yeah. race? Um, it was, it was good. Obviously um, it was good. You made it, you got a sub three day, three day. Yeah. Good, good job. Um... It was full on, but I I I was pretty full on myself. Um, I had, um, I just actually just trusted the sort of like the heart rate and trusted the process of you know, Chris at the time was coaching me. Um, you know, I had had actually a pretty rough training block coming into this marathon with a whole lot of sort of funny things going on in my training. Um, I had done like there were some fueling things that were sort of. Uh yeah just not going down well um <laughs> the old gels and the old gels did not agree with me so i ended up using tailwind on the rate on race day and it worked really well for me mm. um so i think i had one good marathon session um which yeah it was good um and then i had done sort of like i started my training like back in april with doing a few tens in a, in a half and um I uh, yes we did a lot of speed stuff over winter mm -hmm. didn't we yeah and I think it definitely paid off like uh in in the last 10ks of this race um so I was able to finish quite fast and speedy um as Chris said the other day put the afterburners on put the afterburners on um but you know, with with Auckland Marathon, as as you know, it's obviously quite hilly for the first ten k's, um, which I think I use mainly heart rate um, on this. Like for me, I found that um, yeah, like my pace and my, my appropriate pace in my in zone three sort of aligned, um, so that was really helpful for the hills. Um, so I was able to be like as we can see down the side here. Um, around sort of like you know mm. around the sort of like 330 pace without being too crazy like i'm not running yeah some faster ones here on some of those downhill and then this is what we we're talking about in the last podcast wasn't it is um yeah there is a range um with auckland because there's some of those early k's of that net down mm. hill and so you're going to be below like pace um and then you get ones that are sort of those net ups where you, you're going to be um, a bit slower then. Yeah, and um, through my um, through my training, I was able to dial in like exactly in my zone three where I was the most steady. Um, so that was very beneficial as well. So um, I kind of knew if I held, uh, I can't remember exactly. Maybe it was around one hundred sixty-two beats. That I was able to sustain mm. that, mm. Um, and uh, I would say that I I was definitely back then quite a conservative starter. Um, so that's what I did, um, and 
this is actually quite like because this is what we noticed um this is like quite high zone three isn't it like from, yeah, that's... from the outset so yeah isn't this a thing when we look at things like this this is yeah it's like oh yeah cool um 47 percent zone three uh, so yeah, fifty percent of the race is zone three. We've spent a big chunk in four, although it's low zone four. There's some data errors here too, by the way. Ignore these big spikes here. There's like data errors, but um, yeah, for the most part, it's very high zone three and yeah, low zone four. And there's a difference there too, like in terms of fatigue. Like it's not just <laughs> zone four is not just zone four. You know, sub threshold like this work rate here, uh, where your heart rate is high zone <laughs> four, or it's just getting below your threshold. That's a very different picture to like this, where you're low zone four, like you know, halfway through the race, pushing in the. This would have been in the headwind section. There would have been like some headwind sections around here, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I am. Um... I remember, yeah, probably heard this before on my podcast, but I, on the podcast, but I remember I had like, you know, an hour, 12 Ks to go and I was like wondering if I could do it. So obviously I was working like at a pretty high intensity mm. um, and yeah, probably because of the wind and, and the mental aspect of like hadn't reached the p t turnaround point um, that I was like, ah, oh, my can, can I do this? And it's like, okay, just accept it and chill. And then, um, you know, I just, when I got to the turnaround point, I obviously felt better. Um, and I was like, I pulled from other races. So this is when mm -hmm. maybe if you've got, if you like mental skills kind of thing, like, cause if I'd done like a yeah, North Shore half marathon, um, not that uh, long before long before I was like I'm just gonna pretend I'm racing a half marathon right now um I know I can I know I can hold you know a threshold around 174 or whatever it was um Be late, late, 170-ish yeah, 72 yeah, I can't quite remember yeah right. um and I seem to be able to be stable there until I got mm. to like that terrible bridge it's probably about 38 k's in and I was like ah but um, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it was a huge dip in my pace, but um, but I was still able to do it, and yeah, I suppose it's just um, mm. yeah, just try, it's kind of like a combination of knowing where you're steady, knowing mm. having a bit of ego. Obviously, I want to get three thirty; yeah, it yeah, is required. Yeah. A little bit. And you're yes. in the ballpark by here of, yeah. of, of getting that goal. Yeah. Um, and then, but then prior prior to it, like that sort of like 12K mark, I wasn't like obsessing or worrying about the sort of like distance to time. Like how, you know, like was I on track? Because it was just unnecessary thinking that I couldn't really uh, change really. If I, I could only change it by pushing harder and um, maybe that would have meant that I would have blown up. So this is when, like, um, the, yeah, it's just, it's, there's, sometimes it's good to push a little bit, obviously. Don't have to be safe, safe, safe. Um, but you sort of, like, it's like calculated risk, I guess. Yeah, first. and you get to know, that's like race experience too, right? Mm. Like, Charlotte's done 100K races before and other 50K, like, I the, see, the yeah. other races, you know, it's like a bit of race, you know, race experience. And, um, yeah, you know, you have, like, data experience um, mm. of, like you said, knowing where you can sit and, um, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Mental skills come into it, physiology, you know, accumulation of training like we're talking about. Yeah, and I um, mm. yeah, like I started running when I was like fifteen. My first race was actually Auckland Mar Half Marathon in two thousand nine. Um, way back, before way the back. running boom. Yes, yeah, way <laughs> back when it wasn't cool. Yeah. Maybe it was, but I wasn't aware of it. So I was just running. Um, yeah. So I've been I've been running for ages as well. Um, way back before we kind of had like all this sort of stuff I that was, we're doing now, wasn't it? Well, I, regardless, I was like fifteen or sixteen. Yeah. wasn't wasn't quite ready to be coached. Um, it was just it was just running hard. Um, Probably didn't have the flash going. Definitely not. I don't think I had a watch. 
and wouldn't have had a watch. I don't know how I, I don't know how I knew how to run, but I just did. And yeah, I'm trying to think what I did for my first marathon in terms of having a device or whatever. Yeah. Oh. I can definitely remember doing some watch runs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Still do that. Cool guy. Yeah, I still do that. Just for fun. Yes. <laughs> RPE, man. RPE. This does, it, it is good, like, intuitively knowing how you, you, you're you feeling as well. Totally. And, I, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, especially if you've come off a race. I, I, for me, personally, mm-hmm. I think it's nice. Yeah, if you've come off a race and you're tired or... And you're sort of coming back. It's just nice to not worry about the watch sometimes and just go by feel. Yeah. Just be tuned in. Another good one was the, uh, maybe we did like those park runs, eh? Oh, I did. Um, like it's quite a nice thing, like when we did, yeah, for like 5K training to do some like 5K like race or park runs, you know, mm. without your watch. You <laughs> just really get to know how to pace your 5K. You probably don't like freak out looking at your watch and like, oh my god, yeah, you're just, first K. You're just fully tuned in to like what you're doing. Mm. It's like pretty cool. I, I like it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Cool. So, so we're going to show you some differences. So yeah, um, to recap this, we'll move on. I guess is um, Shah's threshold is one seventy four, so makes that makes her upper zone to aerobic uh, one fifty five. Um, so you could say her aerobics. I normally take a 30 beat range when I'm talking aerobic to runners that I coach. So I'll just, because that's like zone one and two is like aerobic. Because mm-hmm. um, like if you're on an undulating run, doing an aerobic run, you're going to be going zone one and two kind of thing with the gradients mm-hmm. that you're doing. So Shah's zone, uh, Shah's aerobic zone is, uh, what's that? Maths, 125 to 155 BPM. Yes, what yeah, you... it's about a thirty beat range. Yep. Yeah. Um, and your zone three, um, sort of IE tempo zone, IE sort of marathon intensity zone, is that sort of one. If we keep it round numbers, one fifty five to one sixty five, and uh, zone four, uh, which is under the sub sub threshold, uh, sort of that one sixty five to low one seventies, um, and you can sort of say that. Zone four is sort of half marathon intensity um, for a lot of us, for a lot of trained folks. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit different if you're like a 230 half marathon up and all that kind of stuff. That's where it gets, yeah, a bit of difference. So, and so that's you, that's your zones. Uh, and the other sort of nuance with you as an individual is, yep, yeah, high zone three and able to close out in your sort of sub threshold in that last uh, period of the race, last 10 odd Ks. So that is Shah. That's me. Now let's move on to a four hour marathoner. Cool, so here we have a four hour marathoner. And as you can see, this is like, <laughs> this is like a textbook example. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you want to like show someone the perfection of like a data file, <laughs> you know, this is like a clean zone three run. The entire, so a little bit different to your one, um, different runner, different individual. Um, yeah, just a very different example. And I can tell you, because I was, we were on the course, obviously, I can tell you that this runner <laughs> was working hard <laughs> in the last, uh, you know, 10K as we all do, like in a marathon, and because we saw her on the course, and so she was working hard. So it's just a, a difference in runner, and you can even see actually a little uh, pace drop um, as, um, yeah, as she would have been pushing back on that wind because this year the wind was on the way back, wasn't it? There was yeah. wind on the way back, and there was wind coming into the bridge um, this year. So a couple of little differences there. So yeah, on that basis, she's working. So yeah, very um, yeah, interesting. Eh? Just the differences. Yeah. So this runner had a threshold has a has a threshold of one sixty eight, and so therefore her zones are different. Um, so aerobic. Um, upper zone two is 150, so you could say her aerobic zone is that sort of 120 to 150 beats, 
in zone 3, i.e. sort of marathon intensity for the most part, as uh, that's sort of in the 150s, 150, run, 150 to 160 kind of range, I always like to 10 beat range there, round, <laughs> round numbers are nice <laughs> for that, <laughs> but that's sort of what it is anyway, um, and her, yeah, zone 4 is that sort of 160 to yeah, 167 kind of thing. Um, so yeah, different runner, um, and different way of fatiguing. Straight into zone three, almost at the start of the race mm -hmm. <laughs> as well. Um, straight onto marathon pace mm -hmm. at 540, straight into zone three. And that's really interesting. Some people will do that, and their heart rate might be like slow into zone two and then settles into zone three like mm. seven to ten k's later so yeah different way of fatiguing different runner yeah and i suppose like in training um this is this kind of stuff is discovered um mm. that this this kind of runner um can sustain this for you know what looks like 42.7 k's um and and that's cool you know it's like it is what it is and it, you know i was just thinking that you know this is just talking about just a couple of things there's a lot of things you know that go into running like your uh like your fueling and your shoes and all that kind of stuff but we're not talking about that today it's like providing that this person has kind of done um you know their best yeah, yeah. best with fueling on race day mm -hmm. they haven't gone out for a depleted run um, you know, and they've just, you know, they've put themselves in the best position that they want to put themselves in the best position for. You know, there's, you know, clients that want the speediest shoes and there's clients that just want shoes that are good, you know, and, um, you know, that kind of stuff can, um, it doesn't, yeah, especially when you get into the point here, it can make a difference. Mm. Um, yeah, and the other thing to think is, like, these runners that we're showing you guys, um, are all folks that have trained <laughs> like with us or, or like have you know some degree of like um, you know running behind them uh, so yeah this you know doesn't mean that just because you someone sets their zones and figures out their marathon intensity zone that they can then just go out and do it <laughs> uh, yeah need it's... to be a degree of um training uh, in order to be able to s hold a steady state like this at this intensity yeah, yeah and that's kind of like what um <laughs> what we were talking about earlier with the aerobic base so this club this runner has like an aerobic base that uh, means that she can sustain you know the zone three and this pace for this long mm -hmm. um this is her four hour pace you know um in intensity and uh you know if she was to keep going you know at this intensity like she would she's she is sort of going down but it is maybe because of the wind but mm. um you know it's that's her you know mm. um and that's being figured out through training and because like it's um it's like a relationship obviously we have, oh, a, yeah, yeah. We have a relationship with the client you know whether yeah. it's just looking at figures or whether it's a bit more more than that but you know we we mm. we know these people on a yeah. on a data data yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah and when we're um uh, setting someone up for a race we provide a pacing plan and guidance around pacing and heart rate parameters mm. um yeah that kind of thing cool yeah yeah so we'll move on to the next person now who's the next one we have a sub 330 male cool so here's a sub 330 fella from this weekend so yeah as you can see a little bit different again yeah he's got more aerobic in his um yes in his uh race than i did even though we got very similar times he was a little bit faster than yeah, me yeah yeah but more but but i had zero zero aerobic <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i can tell you and then so this is where the nuance comes isn't it so if this individual because again we were on the course yeah <laughs> we saw this guy running back and he he was like cooked doing his last few k's you know and yeah. that's like he's raced a solid hard awesome race mm. executed and um, so you know if he had gone harder back here like if his 
run in these earlier stages look anything like your, mm. even though you guys have done the same time. Yeah. Um, if his zone, if his heart rate was up in a zone three or high zone three early, then it would have been a very different outcome. Yeah, I, yeah. I suspect it would have been a low three thirties. Could have been a three thirty three or su or such, because there would have just been breakdown <laughs> in that last, uh, you know, ten to fifteen k's. Um, the breakdown would have come sooner, because you can see also this individual has slowed uh, a little bit uh, and then sort of regrouped quite strongly at the end there. Um, but he had done enough uh, back here. And you can see even the decoupling actually of the. Uh, the heart rate and the pace starts decoupling like quite far before. Um, but the other unique thing about this individual is he can generate quite a lot of power, quite mm -hmm. a strong runner, and uh, yeah, can close out like way on his threshold for quite a significant amount of time. And that's just the difference with this individual. Yeah, I was just thinking that that's, you know, you have to take in, like, you as a person as well and, like, you know, your age, your sex, yeah. um, your mus muscle mass. Yes. Um, and, um, and how far you want to go into the well. Yes. Like, <laughs> like how far do you want to go? Or, how you know, how far are you comfortable going? Because it is a bit of an exploration thing, isn't it? Yeah. Because I think we had that discussion. Was it you? Oh, th yeah, you were quite conservative eh, at one point if you were running and were like, we were talking about, um, let's go and like explore the, let's go and explore the well a bit earlier in the race than later in the race. Yeah, I think after Auckland, I was like, let's go um, try going a little bit harder earlier on. And now I can't not go easy. <laughs> I mean, not go hard. I go quite hard now. A lot in a lot of like, I've gone way too hard in park runs and stuff. Um, but that's all good. Um yeah so it's again you know that's that's part of um it's part of you as a person and obviously could uh, impact your heart rate zones and also your pace zones and your time and a marathon takes in you know um your strengths and your weaknesses as a runner and it's you your yeah um physically and sort of like mentally and how far you want to go into well like we mm -hmm. have runners that do lots of races and maybe they don't want to go too far in the well because that might mean that they mm. don't want to race. Does impact your recovery. Yes. Like these kind of, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm. And sometimes, um, yeah, it's like emotionally mm. how much energy you've put into this um, can also affect your outcome on the day. It can end up being faster, but also it could also impact your recovery because you've not only depleted your body physically, but now you've like – emotionally really depleted because you've put so much riding on this race that you're like oh god um hmm. but everyone's so different and yeah yeah so this individual um before we move on to our sub 240 hour marathoner um he actually has the same zones as me this is the same zones that i have um threshold of around 179 beats per minute and so that puts his aerobic upper zone to aerobic at 160 beats. Um, so his aerobic zone would be that sort of 130 to 160 BPM, uh, that sort of zone three, uh, i.e. tempo or um, sort of marathon intensity uh, is that 160 to 170 beats. In zone four, sub threshold is that sort of 170 to uh, 178 or 179 being the threshold. Um, so yeah, similar look and feel uh, in terms of majority zone three, different actual numbers. Yeah, it does look quite different. Amazing, eh? Yeah. Cool, so we'll move on to the next one. Cool, and here is a sub 240 hour male um, in Auckland. Um, yeah. And yeah, similar picture. Um, similar picture in terms of the drift. This is another sort of uh, difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Because he's like his yes. heart rate is just gone. It hasn't, you know, slower, been... slower drift. Yeah, yeah. Yes. This this is another sort of uh, 
a nice looking sort of file, but just in a different way, isn't it? <laughs> well, his heart rate's 144 and he's running 355 pace. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is quite funny, isn't it? Hard <laughs> be, Because the early, early stages of the race, uh, yes, first 5Ks, 3.46 pace, and it appears that his heart rate is, in, is aerobic, but obviously that's not <laughs> as weird as a bit of a nuance there because the his intensity is definitely marathon intensity, and he's uh, yeah on his way to sort of uh, drifting into a zone three and then settling for the most part for a good chunk of the race. So um, again, it's about yeah, knowing beforehand, like what is, this is where pace zones come in so handy as well. You sort of get mm. to ballpark someone's uh, marathon pace based off a threshold session or something. You can pull their uh, pace zones for a start and then you can get their marathon pace pretty close to knowing what it is. Uh, and then obviously simulate it in training to, um, yeah, get this kind of a picture. Um, from and then from there we can build that pacing and heart rate strategy plan for race day, and get that um, optimum optimal outcome. Yeah. So if this individual just um, relied on, you know, yeah, like Chris said, this when pace is is very beneficial because if this client runner um and it's like I need to get my heart rate into zone three from you know within the first five Ks he'd probably be running like three thirty pace. <laughs> yeah like half marathon or yeah, below intensity yeah yeah intensity and then he would have probably you know blown up um you know it's a really common thing it can be a common thing also like when you're even doing an aerobic run and obviously your heart rate um is low and you're like mm. gotta get it between one forty and one fifty five. Yes. I'll run like fifteen seconds lower and then by the time that you've done that, you'll just spend the whole time trying just to bring your down, heart, yeah. heart rate down. And that's the same um, same in like a, a race or running tempo. Like, so this person could, instead of, you know, going into, you know, threshold later in the race, they're kind of like dipping in it here, you know, or per se. I don't, don't know. It's like hypothetical, but, you know, um, maybe, you know, with a runner like this, you would – let them know that this is what we've observed about their heart rate. So just yeah, still yeah, go yeah. out. Totally, totally. Still go out yeah. at, at the appropriate pace and you'll get there in 5Ks in and then you'll find that you're settled. And, yeah, yeah, and we see this like, so with this uh, with this athlete actually as well and with this runner type, is even on an aerobic easy run, um, this individual's heart rate is almost zone one, like barely. <laughs> barely so, beating. Uh, a person like a person like this who's doing a, a sub to um, forty marathon, their aerobic pace is like anywhere that sort of four fifteen to five. I mean, they they can go for a run at five thirty pace too. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like <laughs> cruise. Like, yeah, yeah, the big big range that they can cruise in in, in aerobic. Um, and uh, yeah, so but yeah, this this particular individual can uh, because of this the way he fatigues and the way his sort of yeah heart rate takes a while to his beat per minute takes a while to come up yeah he can like do a one hour um aerobic run at 4 30 pace and for the most part it's a zone one it just looks like a zone one run uh, yeah it's crazy 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 fast um hmm. and you know it could be i'm a little bit similar with uh hmm. obviously not this caliber but the way my kind of uh, heart rate works um, with easy runs uh, or how it appears to work, you know, I can do a one hour aerobic run. Aerobic for me is like 5.30ish, mid fives, somewhere around there. And um, for the most part, my heart rate would be zone one as well, like in that kind of run as well. Doesn't mean I should run faster. Like, yeah. Yeah, this is like when... Um... Cause then I don't feel like it's an aerobic run. <laughs> So yeah, cool. We can see with this person. So this is an interesting one. This this fellow has lower zones um, than a lot, and he is a male in his mid forties. And so, not that that matters actually. It's just to give a bit of context because I am also almost a male in my mid forties. <laughs> and my, I my, think this is what my, my, uh, the midst of the season. My threshold is still one eighty-ish. <laughs> 
so, got two years two years yeah 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 <laughs> hanging on i'm hanging on <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this individual's um, threshold is that sort of 168, uh, which puts his aerobic uh, upper zone to aerobic at 150, so aerobic zone sort of 120 to 150, uh, zone 3, i.e. marathon intensity for the most part, um, yeah, in the 150s, 151 to 158, and we can see with his race, uh, yeah, just a slow drift initially, settled in zone 3 for the most part, became high zone 3 as he fatigued, and then started just pushing into zone 4, uh, once he got plus 30Ks, and then certainly closing out very well uh, in that final sort of 7.5Ks, um, able to push into his threshold to close out. And um, yeah, even though a bit of a reduction in pace coming into the wind in that, um, but still, um, yeah, closing out work rate is um, fully there. Cool, yeah, so I hope you guys have enjoyed that deep dive data analysis and ramblings from us about <laughs> various <laughs> training things to do with zones, heart rates, marathon training, all that kind of stuff. Yes, I hope you've uh, gained some more insight or if it's, you know, sometimes it can create um, more, like, questions. I'm like, you know, Mal, you, can, you know, and that's when, like, feel free to get in touch with us. Um, if you were like, oh, I'm actually unsure, you know, we can take away the second guessing um, for you as well. Yeah, that's what we do full time. Yeah. And I think, like, as well, I think that was part of the motivation behind making this um, podcast today is um we're all different <laughs> and we all have our own um, running uh, or athletic journeys and so we're all a little bit different I mean, and you can see like in the data <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that we are literally all different and so yeah i think one thing that trips a lot of runners up and this is true for someone at the back of the field or a, or a, an elite athlete at the front is comparing ourselves to others and we see what someone else is doing with their training and what sort of outcomes they're getting and we think that um, they're doing that so i got to do this and um, while that is um, there's some truth to that as well it's not always it's well actually it's mostly not <laughs> the case um, for every person like there's that sort of magic mix um, of yeah training mix um, and you know various disciplines that are going to be best for that for each individual yeah cool so where do we find you charlotte you find me on instagram my name is trail girl charlotte you can also find me on youtube um where i have uh, runners strength uh workouts again trail girl charlotte and you can also find me on strava my name is charlotte milne yeah <laughs> And I'm NZ Nomad Runner, um, Instagram, YouTube, and Chris Lucas on Strava. And yeah, we'll put a lot of links below for um, CMF Run Club and 101 Coaching. And if you are wanting to do something at Tarawera, now is the time to get in touch. <laughs> yes, start training today. Yeah, it's like 12 weeks, pretty much, uh, next week, I think. So if you're a sort of seasoned campaigner um 12 weeks is fine if, for your 100k and miler um if you're a seasoned campaigner done a bit before um if you're new coming in you've done some maybe done a couple of marathons or whatever and you're stepping up to the 50k then 12 weeks is also okay for the title to 50k so now is the time. So we can figure out your pace zones and your heart rate zones. Yeah, yeah. So and we, take away all the um, yeah. the guessing and the time spent on Facebook pages thinking about am I doing the right thing. Yes. Um, we can, uh, we we do that for you. We take out the thinking. So you can just relax, enjoy your running and your training and getting better. Yes. Yes. Catch you on the next one. See ya. Bye. Bye.